guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for today's video because this is by far my most commonly asked question over on TikTok. Can you tell me what the best products are from The Ordinary for dry skin or oily skin or acne prone skin or whatever kind of skin? By far, I get asked this all the time. So that is exactly what we're gonna do here today. I thought we would start off by just talking through five different products that I think are great for dry skin. We're starting with dry skin today because I normally start these series with oily skin, I realize, just unintentionally because that's my skin type. And then I leave you guys that have dry skin hanging for a while. So you're in for a treat today because you're up first and we're gonna talk through five different products from The Ordinary that I think are worth looking into if you have dry skin. Don't worry, I will definitely do a follow-up for oily skin, and if you want more of these videos, there are many more products from The Ordinary that are for dry versus oily, etc. There's a lot, there's no way I can fit it all in one video. So we're gonna start with five. If you guys wanna see five products from The Ordinary that are great for normal to dry skin, you're in the right spot. Let's jump right into it. The first product is actually the only cleanser that The Ordinary has, and it's their Squalane Cleanser. Side note, this is why I decided to approach this series in this way and not how I approached my CeraVe series that's similar to this where I put together a CeraVe skincare routine based on your skin type because The Ordinary doesn't have that many products in the cleanser and moisturizer department which we need to create skincare routines for different skin types. So the one cleanser that they have is their Squalane cleanser. This says that it's a Squalane based face cleanser and makeup remover and this one has 1.7 fluid ounces of product in it, and it retails for $7.90. So The Ordinary says that this is a gentle cleansing product formulated to target makeup removal while leaving the skin feeling smooth and moisturized. Well, they say whilst, is that how you say that? Whilst, whilst leaving, I don't know. The formula incorporates squalane alongside other lipophilic esters that are gentle, moisturizing, and efficient in dissolving makeup and facial impurities and increasing the spreadability of the product. When rubbed between your palms for approximately 10 to 30 seconds, the product undergoes important textural changes from a balm-like consistency to a clear oil-like consistency. This allows the emulsifying sucrose esters in the formula to trap and blend the dissolved makeup and facial impurities with water for rinsing. Being non-comedogenic and soap-free, this formula is designed to be gentle enough for daily use without over drying the skin, making it suitable for all skin types. So I have to say that this cleanser is one that took me a long time to come around to, and that's just because of the first ingredient on the label, which is squalane. That's what this is. And squalane is the saturated shelf-stable form of an ingredient called squalene. So squalane, but with an E. And squalene is naturally occurring in human sebum. So human, am I okay? naturally occurring in human sebum, pull it together. And that's an ingredient that's best to avoid if you're acne prone because one of the many contributing factors to a breakout is excessive sebum production. So if we're putting products on our face that have ingredients in them that are naturally occurring in human sebum, that could be something that worsens acne for us or makes us more likely to break out. And then we have squalane, which again is the saturated shelf stable form of squalene. So squalene is not supposed to be comedogenic. It shouldn't clog your pores. However, I have read articles written by dermatologists that suggest that if you are incredibly acne prone, you may still wanna steer clear of squalane just to play it safe. Again, that doesn't mean it's going to be an issue for everyone. It shouldn't be a comedogenic ingredient. And aside from that, it's a really great ingredient, which we'll dive into, but it's something that doesn't work for everybody that's acne prone. I've seen comments from you guys that say you can't use that ingredient. You feel that it breaks you out. And that's because it's a derivative of squalene. Okay, we just talked for seven years, sorry, but I feel like that was really important for me to explain as part of this review, really talk about what squalene is and you know, just some of the things that I have looked into before and why I avoided this for so long. But after I started to play around with it, I realized that I really, really do like it and just the experience and the formulation of it is really nice. So I continued to use it. I'm actually almost out of this bottle and after almost using an entire bottle, I can tell you guys that I actually do love this. And it doesn't cause me to break out, which is great. So I really like The Ordinary's description on this product because that is exactly what happens. It's a very unique product. I don't have any other cleansers like this or makeup removal products that start off as that cream and then turn into almost an oil. It's just, it feels really, really nice on the skin and does do a great job at dissolving that oil. At first, when I squeezed it out of the tube, I was like, there's no way this is gonna remove my makeup. Makeup, and it does. It truly does kind of melt down into a makeup remover. It's crazy, but it works really well. And that's coming from somebody who wears a full face of makeup, full coverage foundation, 
it totally removes all of that. The reason that I wanted to include this in the dry skin version of this video is number one, because the formulation is so great. If you have dry flaky skin, it's very soft, it's gentle, it's smooth. It just feels nourishing and moisturizing as you're removing that makeup versus something maybe like a micellar water, which definitely is not a nourishing kind of product. And aside from that, squalane is just such a great moisturizing ingredient. It softens and smooths the skin, it replenishes, it's just, awesome if you have dry skin. So while this is not something that I would say is the most effective at deeply cleansing the skin for the purpose of makeup removal and being gentle and doing that, 100% is great. So how I personally like to use this is actually just for makeup and sunscreen removal. So I'll use this first, very first step in my skincare routine and then go in with a cleanser after, a cleanser that's not designed to remove makeup and make sure that all of the remaining residue is off of my skin and that my skin is properly cleansed. While I think that's a great way to use this product, I recognize that that may be too irritating for dry skin types. If you have really flaky, rough, scaly skin, a lot of irritation going on, that second cleanser just may leave you feeling too strict and dry. And in that scenario, I think you can totally just use this on its own. It will be gentle. It'll get rid of any makeup and sunscreen that you have on, and then you can go ahead with the rest of your skincare routine. So if all of those things sound right up your alley, I would definitely recommend checking out the Squalane Cleanser. I really, really like it, even though I was very sus about it at first and didn't want to use it for the longest time. I really enjoy this product. It's not my favorite cleansing product. Like I said, I don't use it that way, but it may be in my top five makeup removal products at this point which says a lot. I'm very picky, you guys know. The next product that I would recommend for dry skin is actually the one moisturizer that The Ordinary has, and it's called their Natural Moisturizing Factors with Hyaluronic Acid. They say it's a surface hydration formula. It has 3.3 fluid ounces of product in it and retails for $5.80. The Ordinary says that natural moisturizing factors are elements to keep the outer layer of the skin protected and well hydrated. Yes. Natural moisturizing factors are made up of multiple amino acids, fatty acids, triglycerides, urea, ceramides, phospholipids, phospholipids. I got this. Glycerin, saccharides, sodium PCA, hyaluronic acid, and many other compounds that are naturally present in skin. Yes. This formula offers non-greasy hydration that acts as a direct topical supplement of impaired natural moisturizing factor components. It contains 11 amino acids, phospholipids, alpha beta gamma fatty acids, alpha beta gamma, <laughs> sounds like sorority, <laughs> triglycerides, sterols, steril esters, glycerin, ceramide precursors, urea, saccharides, sodium PCA, and hyaluronic acid. I need a minute. It offers immediate hydration and lasting results with continued use. So this moisturizer I think is actually one that a lot of skin types could use and really enjoy, but if I had to force myself to choose dry skin versus oily skin after using it for a while, I decided I felt like it was a little bit more suited towards dry skin and specifically in the morning. <laughs> or I guess it could be an oily skin nighttime moisturizer. So it's definitely not the thickest moisturizing product that I've ever used or reviewed for you guys. There are ones that are far thicker, more balmy, kind of have a waxy finish. So if that's the kind of thing that you need for daytime moisture, by all means, go for it. But if you want something that still is very moisturizing, but is lighter weight, I think you may really enjoy this. The formula is super nice. It's soft, it feels moisturizing and nourishing, but it actually dries down really quickly. So that's why I think it's great for the daytime because it works really well underneath makeup or sunscreen or both. And as point of comparison, if you have ever tried the CeraVe Daily Moisturizing Lotion, this is definitely thicker than that. It's more of that thicker cream consistency, even though it dries down pretty quickly, versus that CeraVe Lotion, which is lighter weight. I have a video reviewing just that lotion that I'll link below if you want to actually see the formula of it. This is a little bit thicker. I think it feels really nice, and I feel like this is something that you would just really enjoy for the daytime if you do have dry skin. And aside from this formulation being great, the ingredient label is great as well. So all of those ingredients that we just talked through that I need to look at again with hearts in my eyes. There's so many that are amazing. I love all of these ingredients because they help to replenish the skin. And that's something that's really important when you have dry skin because one of the things that you're more prone to is transepidermal water loss and an impaired skin barrier. So skin barrier damage and disruption that can lead to peeling, flaking, dehydrated skin that's itchy and irritated and uncomfortable. <sighs> the worst, the worst. And one of the ways in which you can help your skin out in that department is to use a product like this that has natural moisturizing factors that will help to 
moisturize, nourish, replenish, and hydrate the skin. So not my personal favorite moisturizer because I actually prefer something like the CeraVe PM Facial Moisturizing Lotion, which is a little bit lighter weight than this, but just because it's not my personal favorite doesn't mean it's not a great product because it definitely is. We all have different preferences and different skin types, of course, at the end of the day. So if you have dry skin, if you have skin barrier damage, check this out. And if this is too lightweight for you, but you love all those ingredients and definitely want them in your skincare routine, you could throw this underneath a thicker moisturizing cream, another affordable one like the CeraVe moisturizing cream. Great. Okay, product number three is their Hyaluronic Acid and B5 Serum. I feel like basic at this point because has everyone not talked about this? but I still wanted to include it in this video for dry skin because I think it's a great dry skin product. So this says it's a hydration support formula with ultra pure vegan hyaluronic acid. It has 2% hyaluronic acid. And this has, how much do it have? One fluid ounce of product in it and it retails for $6.80, a very affordable hyaluronic acid serum. Let's read the product description quickly. So it says a hyaluronic acid can attract up to 1000 times its weight in water. The molecular size of hyaluronic acid determines its depth of delivery in the skin. This formula combines low, medium, and high molecular weight hyaluronic acid, as well as next generation hyaluronic acid cross polymer at a combined concentration of 2% for multi-depth hydration. This system is supported with the addition of vitamin B5, which also enhances surface hydration. Then they say, note, hyaluronic acid is found in the skin naturally, but its natural function within the skin is not hydration. Many products have used HA, hyaluronic acid, to claim hydration benefits, but HA is too large of a molecule to penetrate the skin and instead sits on the surface of the skin and can draw moisture out, making the surface feel soft and hydrated temporarily while making you feel like you need more after the product is rinsed. This formula, on the other hand, uses three forms of HA with varying molecular weights as well as HA cross polymer to offer multi-depth hydration and visible plumping without drawing water out of the skin solely to improve temporary surface hydration. So I'll try to kind of simplify that. What they're saying is the reason why you want to have a hyaluronic acid serum like this with hyaluronic acid at different molecular weights is because hyaluronic acid at larger molecular weights does a really good job at plumping the surface levels of our skin, hydrating the surface of our skin, can't penetrate deeply. Smaller molecular weight forms of hyaluronic acid can penetrate a little bit deeper than those larger molecular weights. Does that make sense? So we want to get that multi-depth and dimension hydration and not just use something that's sitting on the surface that, like they said, eventually makes us feel like we actually need more moisture. So all of that is great about this serum. I know that there are a lot of other hyaluronic acid serums out there that just maybe have one molecular weight. I mean, now there are so many hyaluronic acid products, so I think a lot of brands have stepped up their game for this specific ingredient. I personally do feel a little bit bored by the ingredient. I don't know if that's the right word and that's not really fair because it is still a great ingredient, but we see it everywhere now. It's in every moisturizer and every sunscreen and every brand seems to have at least one, if not multiple, hyaluronic acid serums. It's a bit overdone. That's what I was trying to say. So with that being said, and thinking about the other serums that exist, I still think that this is a great option if you want a hyaluronic acid serum. I like the addition of vitamin B5, so that is the same thing as panthenol, if you've heard me say that before. I know I've mentioned it before, but it may have been a while. So that is something that helps to hydrate and moisturize the skin and also helps to protect the skin barrier as well. I really like the formulation of this. Is it the most elegant serum formulation I've ever felt? No, but it's $6.80, right? Was that how much it was? Yeah. Under $7 for that, I would consider that to be amazing. I think it does feel great. It feels very hydrating. It's nice and smooth and it's not thick or greasy or sticky at all, at least for me. I just think it's a really nice basic serum. And I included it in the dry skin version of this video because of course hydration is one of the many things that dry skin types lack, but that doesn't mean that you can't use this if you have oily skin. I think you may really enjoy it that way. You just might wanna pair it with different products depending on your skin type. So if you have dry skin, I think this product will work great for you underneath a thicker moisturizing cream. It'll really help to lock in that hydration and just give your skin a nice healthy glow. Great to use it in that way. And then if you're oily, which I know is not the purpose of this video, but if you are, you could just use this underneath a lighter weight, more gel-like moisturizer. The fourth and second to last product is the lactic acid and hyaluronic acid solution. So this one that I have is their 10% formulation, but they do have a 5% version available as well. It says it's a high strength lactic acid superficial peeling formulation 
Same amount of product as the hyaluronic acid serum and the same price point as well, $6.80. The Ordinary says that lactic acid is an alpha hydroxy acid that exfoliates the skin. This 10% formulation offers mild exfoliation and is supported with a purified Tasmanian pepperberry, known to reduce signs of inflammation and sensitivity that is often associated with exfoliation. And acids are definitely not required in a skincare routine. They can for sure cause irritation and sensitivity, especially when paired with other ingredients that you may already be using in a skincare routine like retinoids, which you should use at different times of day if you do. But if you're using, let's say, tretinoin and you introduce an acid into your morning skincare routine, that may be something that really irritates your skin. And if you already have dry skin, a compromised skin barrier, you want to be careful with any acid use at all. However, the reason that I wanted to include lactic acid in this video is because lactic acid is supposed to be a gentler exfoliant that actually also helps to hydrate the skin. So I think that's a common misconception with acid use is that it will really dry out your skin. And while you definitely can experience irritation, lactic acid is something that not only helps to hydrate, but it will help to soften the skin as well. So it's best if you have dull dehydrated skin because it will really help to target those concerns. And I actually would recommend starting off with their 5% formulation. Again, I just have 10% in my collection, so that's why I'm showing it here. Yes, higher concentrations of lactic acid are going to be more potent, but that comes with a higher likelihood for irritation. So especially if you have dryness, a little bit of sensitivity, be careful. If you have a lot of sensitivity and irritation going on, don't use an acid at all, especially if you have broken skin or skin barrier damage, for sure skip it or it will hurt. It'll sting and burn like crap. But if not, and you just have dryness, start off with the 5%, see how your skin responds. If you tolerate that well, maybe you can step up to the 10% or maybe 5% is where you will live. But regardless, it's a really nice ingredient and may actually help you over time to improve the look of that flaky, dull, dehydrated skin into glowy, healthy skin. And aside from using this in the morning at a different time of day than your retinoid, I would just recommend using this after cleansing and before serum, moisturizer, and sunscreen. You can just leave this on the skin. If you're wondering how this compares to their AHA, BHA peel, I actually have a comparison review on both of those products that I will link below if you want to know more there. But otherwise, this is a great product worth looking into if you want an acid that may be gentler on your skin and safer for dehydrated skin types. All right, the fifth and final product that I have to recommend for you guys is the 2% alpha arbutin with hyaluronic acid serum. So this says it's a concentrated serum with 2% purified alpha arbutin and hyaluronic acid. This one has the same amount of product as those other two products and retails for $8.90. Okay, so The Ordinary says that alpha arbutin reduces the look of spots and hyperpigmentation. It's used at a high 2% concentration versus a standard concentration of 1% and supported with a next generation form of hyaluronic acid for enhanced delivery. Alpha arbutin is much stronger in effect than arbutin or beta arbutin. So there's a couple different reasons why I wanted to include this specific serum in this video. One is if you're somebody that experiences irritation in using a vitamin C serum. Vitamin C is another antioxidant with similar benefits. Benefits. It also helps to fade dark spots, fade hyperpigmentation, brighten the skin. However, that can definitely be an ingredient, especially at higher concentrations, that is irritating for some. And especially if you have dry skin that feels a little bit sensitive and irritated, vitamin C may not agree with you. So what you could look into is testing out an alpha arbutin serum instead. Of course, I don't have any way of knowing if this will also irritate your skin, if vitamin C does, but I think it's something that's worth looking into because it has similar benefits to vitamin C as far as fading dark spots goes. And of course, the hyaluronic acid in this will help to hydrate the skin, and a lot of vitamin C serums are extremely watery and liquidy and don't really do much for hydrating the skin. Of course, that's not all vitamin C serums, but this one definitely feels more hydrating and has a little bit of a thicker consistency than some other vitamin C serums that I've tested out before. I also have a review up on this one as well where I compare it to the Ordinary's Asorbyl Glucoside Serum, which is one of their vitamin C solutions. So if you wanna see how those directly compare, that video will be linked below. But if you are looking for a good alternative to vitamin C that may treat your skin better and not cause sensitivity, check out Alvar Butin. So that's everything. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you have dry skin and currently use any of these products or maybe you have oily skin and you love these products? 
Again, same thing for my CeraVe videos that are kind of similar to this. Just because I'm recommending them for dry skin absolutely doesn't mean that you can't use them if you have oily skin. Of course you can. You can use whatever you would like and whatever works well for your skin. I'm just letting you guys know what some of my favorites are for certain skin types and why. So other than that, if there's anything else you would like to see from me next, leave that request in the comments below. I would love to do that for you. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and click on that notification bell, and send my channel to a friend. All of those things really help me out and support my channel and mean so much to me. Other than that, my next video will be up in a few days. So until then, I hope you have a great few days.